Welcome to this week's edition of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. I'm sports editor Jim Leitner. And this is Brendan West, star sports reporter. I am filling in for Steve Ortman this week, and we got a little bit of footage of how the fans in Philadelphia responded to the news that Steve would not be hosting the show this week. Take that away, Paul. Oh my, I hope everybody's okay over there. Um, yes, uh, Steve is actually on assignment right now. He went looking for a Malcolm Butler jersey. We know he's a Patriots fan. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably being used in a Tide commercial because it's brand new and white and barely <laughs> all clean and everything. Sorry. Getting, getting into, uh, into the local sports season. Very, very busy time of the year for, for basketball. And postseason actually started this week. Uh, we got some real good primers in the last couple weeks for boys basketball, which is Brendan's area of expertise. Uh, tell us a little bit about Hempstead's victory over Wallert last weekend, or last Friday. Very exciting game. Uh, came down to the bite. Down to the buzzer. Yeah, uh, you know, I tell you what, uh, it's been a while since I covered a high school basketball game quite as uh, exciting as that one. Both teams back and forth, neck and neck. I don't think either team led by more than six points the entire contest, so that just shows you how close this one actually was. Um, we get down to the wire here, the final minute, and Craig Collins is at the free throw line to put Wallert in the lead. He sinks one of two free throws, um, giving Hempstead the ball with 9.5 seconds left. Now, uh, Mustangs coach Kurt Deutsch doesn't call a timeout in this situation. He said he just chooses to let his team uh, run down run down the court uh, for that for a last second shot and uh, here's what actually happened. That was Keith Johnson for W. Kempstead making that last second shot. Uh, Brendan, I want to ask you about that strate strategy that uh, Coach Deutsch had. You know, a lot of times you'll let, you'll see a coach call timeout in that situation, set up a play, and try to make something happen. Tell me about that strategy. Was that the right call? Obviously, it worked out for Hempstead, but is that the right call in that situation for a high school basketball game? Well, you know, uh, Kurt made an excellent point, I think, when I spoke with him after the game. Uh, you know, he said that in that situation, the reason why he doesn't like to call timeouts is because you're you're basically catching the the. the most of the time, the best ways to score in basketball are in transition when you're sort of catching the team off guard. You call a timeout in that situation, maybe Waller's able to set up its defense, get the right personnel on the court that it wants. Um, you know, you, there's no guarantees you're able to inbound, inbound the ball well. Uh, you know, I liked that situation right there because, you, and you, you're starting to see this creep up a lot. Um, in crunch time in basketball games where the inbound guy like Johnson was in that situation uh, is sort of the trailer and when Lucas Duax gets triple teamed in that situation he feeds it right to Johnson for a wide open look that's what you want as a wide open look so uh, credit to Hempstead they win that game 55 to 53 at the buzzer um, and yeah I, I, I do kind of agree with the strategy there Jim I'm having to assume that that's something that they practice and they work on that in that situation and, and and going for it right away. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, I'm not at practices every single day, but I'm, I'm sure that these teams are practicing for all kinds of different scenarios, you know, uh, uh, and, and the way City Basketball has kind of um, been played out these last three years since I arrived and started covering this beat, I mean, we've had a ton of nail biters. We've had a ton of really close, exciting games, and you, you, you know, the, the, the better prepared your teams are, for situations like that, the more likely it is you're going to come out on top. So, uh, in a competitive environment like Dubuque basketball has been these last few years, uh, you know these teams are experienced and prepared to get the job done, as Hempstead showed against Wallert. We got almost a perfect segue into this week's game. Uh, you have both Hempstead and senior boys playing extremely well. 
both won again on Tuesday night to extend their winning streaks and they meet on Friday at Moody Gymnasium on the Hempstead campus. Uh, give us a little snapshot preview of what you're expecting on Friday night from those two teams, uh, two teams that are highly regarded in the state and in the Mississippi Valley Conference. Well, uh, you know, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, both teams are on a six-game win streak. That means Hempstead and Senior have both won six games in a row between the two of them. Uh, both teams have met up the last two years, standing in each other's way in the playoffs. You know, those classic sub-state battles. Both teams... Uh, are in the rankings. Both teams have, uh, you know, achieved signature wins this year. Senior most recently against uh, number one Iowa City West. Hempstead obviously on its six-game win streak, including against Wallert, who was ranked at the time. So there's a lot of factors here. And I just want to say, you know, as somebody who's been able to watch this rivalry on the sidelines and the way it's developed, I mean, I, I, I had Coach Wendell Imers for seniors say to me that this is uh, the only time in his long tenure that he's coached on the sidelines for senior where both programs aren't just good at basketball or aren't just like dead even in terms of the competition, but both programs right now, these last three years, are great at basketball. Both programs are worthy of going to the state tournament. And in a way, it's a little bit sad that they won't be meeting up in the playoffs this year unless they both get to the state tournament. Um, so as the reporter, as, as a reporter and, and talking to some of the players, I'm almost treating this as possibly the last time we see the Mustangs Rams rivalry in its current competitive great iteration uh, on the same floor, at least in this coverage area. So uh, we were able to catch up with a couple players uh, who will most likely be playing their last senior Hempstead rivalry game. And, and here's what uh, Lucas Duax and Carter Stevens both had to say following their wins on Tuesday. Carter, you know, uh, it you guys were able to shake off maybe a little bit of a rough first half and really pour on the points. You scored 22 in the first half. You guys had 26 in the third quarter alone. So what changed you after halftime? Why were you able to maybe get back to your guys' groove that you sort of had against Iowa City West and that you're in late with? Oh, yeah, you know, Coach really emphasized uh, us turning the ball over, and a big part of that has to do with me at point guard position. I wasn't I wasn't really focused in the start, but, you know, second half we got it going. I started uh, distributing the ball, and uh, uh, they were hitting shots, and... Uh, Big part of it is when we get out and run, teams are it's hard to stop us uh, when we're getting out and running. We got great shooters and great finishers, so uh, I'd say we're more focused in the second half. You know, uh, uh, you guys had this could be the last time you personally face Hempstead. I mean, you never know, but um, that's coming up on Friday and everything. And I guess uh, if you could preview that a little bit for me, what's that rivalry been like the last couple of years? Uh, you've you've obviously been on the floor for a bunch of really awesome games, and uh, you know it's going to be. I, I expect another really good one on uh, Friday here. Yeah, you know, uh, no matter where we're playing them at, it's always going to be a big crowd and tough game. And uh, like I said, they're physical on defense. They got great guard play, great, great post with Keith, and uh, it'll be a fun game. You know, it's going to be close like always. And uh, no matter who we put out there on the floor, it's going to be a good game. Uh, yeah, right when we um, we got knocked a couple of shots down in the beginning, and from there we just kept rolling and rolling and went with uh, transition. We tried to push the ball a lot and let our defense. Um, great offense for us, and it worked out well. Yeah, and uh, talk about uh, Keith Johnson inside. Just you guys really seem to have it, especially tonight, but also all season you've had that inside out really going. Yeah, both Keith and Will do a great job down in there. Mm -hmm. um, we try to play through the post, get the ball in there, and then um, cut off that, shape up, try to knock down shots, and really play through them. Yeah, and uh, Friday night, obviously, big rematch with Senior. Mm -hmm. Noah Carter's going to be back. What are you guys expecting out of that one? Um, we know it'll be a good game, great atmosphere. It always is with mm -hmm. inner city games, but we're looking forward to it. Um, hoping to have a couple of good days of practice coming up and um, watch film and be as ready as we can be. Sure. Now, when you guys are this close with the postseason around the corner, what, kind of, what could a game like this one with Senior really do for you guys moving forward? It can definitely bring in a lot of momentum going into uh, – Substate um, winning what now four in a row for us. If we can get that fifth one, um, the conference is still in the picture for us, so it definitely is a big one for us. Well, the Hempstead senior game will not be the only exciting action for local athletes this weekend. We also have the district wrestling meets. Uh, so wrestlers from all three city schools, as well as, as well as those from the area, will be trying to compete for spots in the state tournament, which is next week down in Des Moines. Uh, we also have the Iowa State's boys swim meet 
on Saturday in Iowa City. So it's going to be a lot of exciting ex uh, action for local athletes and it will keep us on our toes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I know our regular host Steve Ortman is probably watching and you know, if he if he's upset, maybe a little bit deflated that we threw some shade on the Patriots, hopefully this will make up for it. Happy birthday, buddy. We'll be seeing you next week. That should do it for this week's episode of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. I'm sports editor Jim Leitner, and this is sports reporter Brendan West.